Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and welcome to episode 28. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a speed run to the moon from Kerbin. Now, in a normal situation, this vessel we've got here would have massive amounts more Delta V than we actually need to do our mission, but this isn't a normal mission. Our little MK1 lander can here is just a temporary location for our Kerbal until we decouple this stage and thrust on with our nerve rocket motor there. On the top there we've got just a little tiny vessel and it's got over 2000 in Delta V just this little thing and it's because it's only got a tiny little seat for our Kerbal to sit in. The atomic rocket stage there with almost 5000 Delta V and then there's 3898 Delta V for the orange tank stage. And then the main booster stage, which has got around 6,500 Delta V total. Probably a bit more, actually, because we're set up with asparagus staging for the first few stages of this. So around 17,000 total Delta V when we take into account the atmospheric drag on liftoff. And just a temporary lander can here so that the Kerbal can just jump out and head up to the seat. That's going to save us 0.6 of a tonne, just a little bit over 0.6 of a tonne. Now that might not actually seem like much, but the 0.66 of a ton extrapolated through both the Nerve rocket motor stages and that final very light lander stage with the seat is actually going to make a very large difference to the Delta V available to us. Just out to the launch pad now. And three, two, one, and launching there. Burberry Kerman having a grand old time there. The force at liftoff for Burberry is actually quite strong already. It's got a starting thrust to weight ratio of around 1.98, which is already quite high, but as we rise further into the sky, we are obviously increasing that force, so Burberry's starting to fill this quite heavily now. We have our asparagus staging set up quite well here, so the first two tanks are going to completely drain empty, while the other three tanks are going to be completely full after detachment here. Over 600 meters per second now, and ditching that first stage. That first stage is always the hardest one to get rid of because the atmosphere just loves throwing those boosters around and smashing them back into your rocket, so we did need some separatrons there. Apoapsis there above 60 kilometers, and we're going to do a very aggressive gravity turn. Just pointing slightly up around 10 degrees from the horizon. We want to convert as much velocity as we can to horizontal velocity here because we're not getting into orbit, we're going to slam straight past orbital velocity and head straight to the moon. We'll just switch to map view and set the moon as our target. Up there around 1600 meters per second now, getting quite a high velocity considering we're still slightly in the atmosphere. Using stability assists target mode to actually keep pointing directly at the moon. Again using asparagus staging for the two side boosters so when these are empty and detached the central booster will still be completely full. Ditching that next set of tanks and also our fairings, we don't need them anymore either. Just patiently waiting for some of those things to get out of the way and off we go, that's fine there now. Already above orbital velocity and we're going to see just how quick we can get to the moon and hopefully land, we'll see how we go. Now obviously we needed to wait until our launch was timed in such a way so that as we got our vessel up into the upper atmosphere and turned horizontal that we were essentially pointing direct towards the moon. So this can take a little bit of trial and error, but if you've got it pointed roughly towards the horizon like this, that's about what you want. Already we're up over 3000 meters per second and this would be enough delta V to actually intersect with the moon in a normal situation, but of course we're not in a normal situation. In fact, as our trajectory gets right up there, we're going to focus view on the moon so we can actually see it coming up and rising here. You can see there we've already got an intercept, but we actually don't want to fly by the moon. We actually want to smash straight into it. Well, hopefully not smash, actually. We want to land on it. But essentially, all we need to do here is make sure that our orbital trajectory line is going straight at the surface. What you'll notice here is as we increase our velocity, the actual orbital lines are getting closer and closer to the moon. But we can actually control this a little by pointing either up or down on the nav ball. Now based on the delta V requirements here, we're going to continue burning towards the moon until we hit around 7,500 meters per second, which is a huge velocity. And of course, remember we need to wipe that back off as we come in to approach the moon's surface. Just tilting up slightly here now so that we can make sure that we're going to impact right on the moon's surface. 
possibly could have just adjusted my launch time just a little so that I didn't need to make a couple of these corrections, but we're not going to lose too much Delta V doing this. So there we go, already we're going to have an impact on the moon, but we actually want to push this over so that we're going to land in the daylight, so we'll keep moving this until we probably get over somewhere towards that large crater. That's the east crater, I think, from memory. Hopefully we'll be able to land somewhere in the middle of that. Now you can see here I'm using a physics warp simply because this orange rocket stage takes quite a long time to empty out, especially using that single poodle engine. But we're actually going to cut the engines off here and leave around 1000 meters per second in delta V just to help us slow down as we come in to approach the moon. Before that orange tank is completely empty, this is a good time to actually get out and EVA over and hop into our seat. Moving past that huge nerve rocket motor and the liquid fuel tanks there. Again we're doing this because we can simply drop the weight from that lander can and just use this light little seat. So we'll just right click the seat there and go and board, there we go. So of course now we need to turn the entire vessel retrograde so that essentially when we come in towards the moon we can start burning to wipe our velocity off. And you know it's quite an art form to pick the correct time here. We want to obviously uh, not come in too fast otherwise we're going to smash into the moon and we don't want to burn all of our velocity off too early otherwise we're going to lose the speed or the velocity I should say that we want to have in order to set a record from Kerbin to the moon. So we're moving at quite a large velocity and we're going to need to probably pick around hmm, maybe 11 minutes, 12 minutes from now to actually start burning and wiping off that velocity otherwise we're just going to come in too fast. Okay there is our time warp complete there, so essentially now we want to start burning these engines and wipe off as much velocity as we can as quickly as we can in order to stop from smashing right into the moon's surface. Because you know, well, that's going to really ruin your day. Well, Burberry's day anyway. We'll just drop that orange tank there that's empty now, we're down around 6200 odd meters per second. So firing at that nerve rocket motor now, and this one's going to take quite a long time to burn out. It's got two liquid fuel tanks there. So of course we're not only removing the 6,000 meters per second that we've got left here, we're also going to need to remove the velocity that we gain simply from the moon constantly pulling us in. This is another reason why we only want to burn all of our fuel right towards the end just prior to landing, almost in a suicide burn kind of way. Anything we can do to minimize the amount of time the moon has got to pull us back in towards its surface is just Delta V saved really. So you can see from the clock in the top right corner there we've just passed 30 minutes in this mission. Keep in mind of course that over 12 of those minutes was actually time warping in to actually start our retrograde burn. Down under 3500 meters per second there now we've dropped a good chunk of that velocity, still quite a long way to go. Just using that physics warp again, just to cut down the amount of time I need to sit through and watch this burn. It is quite boring when you're using the nerve rocket motors. Just coming down under 2000 meters per second now, almost empty there with the nerve rocket stage. 1500 meters per second. And we'll ditch that stage there, that's empty. And making sure we're still on target, switching to map view, yep that's still looking good. We better jump back in and start firing at this last little lander. We can pop out those landing legs there as well. 1300 meters per second there and actually not wiping off the velocity quite as fast as I thought that I would actually with this stage. Down we come, looking pretty good actually. It is going to be a little tight though. <laughs> We really just want to come down in a suicide burn and just wipe off the last bit of velocity in the last few seconds. Gee, this is going to be very tight though. Oh, 600. Come on, come on, need more power. Oh geez, I don't know about this. 400, come on, come on. 300. Oh goodness, come on. This is like a total brown trousers moment, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Touchdown at 36 minutes and 45 seconds. <laughs> that was uh, much closer than I was expecting. 
wiping the sweat off my face, we'll leave the seat and come and touch down ourselves. Burberry Kerman here coming down on the surface. And now I don't know what to do now that I'm actually here. <laughs> um, I guess the very first thing to do should be to plant a flag to mark where we set our record time. Just planting the flag there. And success, because I have no imagination right now. Success, that would do. So I might just actually jump back in the seat now and we'll have a look how much fuel we've got left. We've probably got a little, a little there to get us up to orbit perhaps. Maybe not quite actually. We might give it a go. We'll see if we can get back into orbit with what we've got left. As we come up here, we'll just point 90 degrees there on the nav ball. Where is it? <laughs> 90 degrees, there it is, okay. And we're going to see how much velocity we have. Can we get ourselves back into orbit? That would be kind of cool. 300 meters per second there already, and oh, we're out of we're out of fuel. Um, that is gonna suck for Burberry Kerman because he is pretty much a dead man. Let's, let's see if we can leave the seat and, uh, hmm. I wonder how far we can get with our um, RCS thrusters on our jetpack. Let's let's see. We'll just point towards our prograde marker there and keep keep moving forwards. Keep, keep pressing that W key. We will be able to get quite far. I I, I don't know if we're going to quite make it to orbital velocity with our EVA pack here. Let's see. No, yeah, well, we've got plenty of EVA propellant left, so maybe. Orbital velocity is just over 500 meters per second from memory, so we probably will get quite close actually. Still quite a long way off from our apoapsis marker, so no dramas there, we'll just keep on thrusting forwards. Interestingly, the manned maneuvering unit that was used in the days of the space shuttle was only capable of around 25 meters per second in Delta V. So these EVA packs that the little Kerbals are using are pretty darn overpowered. This of course suits me just fine right now because we are at orbital velocity right there. There we go. <laughs> so Burberry Kerman isn't dead after all, but he is very much stranded. Very much stranded actually. I don't know what we're going to do with Burberry. Hmm. It's a good thing he doesn't need air or food. He can enjoy the view though. It is a very nice view. He can look out towards the sun and contemplate just how damn cold it is out here. <laughs> he does look very happy for somebody that's stranded though, I will say that. It is nice there, Kerbin, in the background. It's a very nice place to be. Probably until you realise that you are going to die. So here's a little challenge for you all. Anybody that can do this same exercise and beat 36 minutes and 45 seconds, leave me a comment. I'd really love to see the vessel that you've used to do it. The vessel I've used here could, could absolutely be improved. I'm certain of that. I'm just more interested to know what is the absolute top time that anybody out there can actually achieve doing this. Because it was a really fun challenge to do and it didn't take that long to put together. The moon is a quick trip and obviously when you're coming at it with this velocity, it's even faster. So let me know what you all come up with. I might even do a follow up video with some of the responses. He's just ecstatic. Just ecstatic. If only we could all be so happy facing absolute death. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them in the comments below. Thanks very much to all of you that have subscribed to this channel, and for those that haven't, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. The four Keo stationary satellites orbiting beautifully there together. So even if we do have our extra ground stations option turned off there in settings, we can always now communicate with any other vessel that's on the ground, on Kerbin, or even in low Kerbin orbit. So you can see here it's possible to set up synchronous orbits around Minmus, around Elu. Also Eve's a great one, it's a fair way out there. Also Drez. And surprisingly you can even do this around Joule, even though you would expect a lot of the...